Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin, Business Development at Carlisle College, uh, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon uh, for our information event. Uh, this afternoon, I'm joined by a number of my colleagues uh, across various uh, programme areas um, who are going to give you a little bit of information um, about the different uh, courses that we have on offer um, here at Carlisle College. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, I can't see or hear you. Hopefully, you can see and hear me. Um, the way to interact uh, with us, if you'd like to ask any questions at all, uh, there is a question and answer facility uh, that's functioning throughout. Um, now, I won't be able to answer your questions throughout, but if you could just use that chat box, type a message in there, um, and then at the end of the presentation, um, we will answer those questions for you. And just to kick us off, um, there's a little introduction um, to Carlisle College uh, from our vice uh, Principal Andy Dodds. Um, so I'm just going to share that content with you now um, and then we will go through the presentation. And I'm one of the directors at Carlisle College and I'm here to give you an introduction to Carlisle College and an overview of what it's like to study here. So if we move straight on to the purpose and vision of Carlisle College, the purpose is to unlock potential through learning with a vision to be a college empowering learners and businesses through excellence and innovation for Cumbria's future prosperity. So you may not know, but Carlisle College did join NCG in 2017, and that's a national group of colleges. And that means that we're now part of one of the UK's largest providers of education, training and employability. But don't worry, there's no change for students. But what it does mean is that Carlisle College can benefit from NCG's full backing for future growth and development. And you can see there on the bottom of the screen some of the colleges which Carlisle College are part of as the NCG group, which does include Newcastle College as one of our local neighbours. So in terms of life at Carlisle College then, you will be treated like an adult and you'll be expected to act like one. It's a place where students are of all ages, courses run on different times and days, so there is no structured timetable as such like you would have at school where there's designated lunch times, designated break times, designated start and end times. Everybody's on completely different timetables tailored to their individual subject choices. So you won't hear the bell ring um, or anything like that. It is much of a, a different environment, but hopefully it will be an environment where you can meet new friends, you can learn new skills, and it will provide yourself with a stepping stone to the future. So if we then look at some of the uh, key uh, points of Carlisle College, some of the key facts. We are really proud of the fact that we have a um, fantastic industry standard equipment and resources. We are really well equipped at our college and it's just a shame that you can't physically be there to see our multi-million pound campus investment that has been millions of pounds put into Carlisle College over the last few years and really when people do visit us they are surprised by just how much the place has changed. And that is complemented by highly qualified tutors uh, with specialist knowledge and a wealth of industry experience. So the tutors that are teaching you or will teach you um, all have industry background, which is great for you. So that means if, for example, if you're studying hairdressing, you'll be taught by people who've worked in hair salons. If you're going to be studying motor vehicle, you'll be taught by people who have worked in motor vehicle garages. And all of that really supports great progression. This is something, a great theme for us, is that we are really proud of the progression of our students into work, further study, including university. And we do have a wide range of courses, and you'll find out about some as part of this virtual open day. And those courses range from entry level through to degrees. So if we move on then and look at some of the facilities within Carlisle College itself, we have our student services department, which will help you with financial support, university applications through UCAS, a careers advice service, and a whole range of pastoral care as well. You'll also be able to get involved in lots of competitions and council events. We have a student council, we have a learner voice, so you can really have an impact and a say on what happens at college and also get to enjoy the campus facilities as well. We have an Oyster Bistro and Restaurant, which is run by our catering students, and our Essence Salons, which are run by our hair and beauty students. So plenty to get involved in. Then, if we now look at why choose Carlisle College, well, importantly, if we look at what Ofsted had to say in their last report, they found that Carlisle College has successfully maintained a good quality of provision since the merger with NCG. And again, they picked up on what I've just been talking about in that teachers use their vocational expertise well 
to help learners understand the link between their studies and future work scenarios. And also that we've designed study programmes well to give learners the experiences that they need to help them progress towards their next steps in education, training or work. So it's very much not just about what you do at Carlisle College, but equipping you for what you are going to do next. So if we now take a look at the number of students at Carlisle College, we usually say we have around about 3,000 students, but don't worry, they're not all in the college on the same day. And those students uh, vary from our biggest uh, group of students is our 16 to 18 year olds, where we have just over 1,200 there. We also have a population of around about 700 apprentices who come into college one day a week as part of their apprenticeship, and then a range of adult learners and those who are studying university level courses as well. So if we now move on to look at again picking up on some of that student support it is important that as well as having a course tutor you will also have a progress coach who is assigned to you and they will really make sure that you uh, have the best chance of success on your course and look after you and make sure that you're progressing well. That'll uh, help with progress reviews with your tutor and also we have an extensive learning support team who can assist with any learning or disability needs that you may have to support you in your studies. Now looking at financial support, it's important to note that full-time further education students who are under 19 at the start of their course will receive free tuition. For those who are over 19, they may qualify for a 19 plus advanced learner loan. So you apply for that, the loan is paid directly to Carlisle College to cover your tuition fees, household income isn't taken into account and you only start paying that loan back once your salary exceeds the threshold amount which is currently at around about £26,000 per annum. You will also potentially be eligible for uh, free courses if you're on some form of support such as job seekers allowance or employment and support allowance and there's also help with um, childcare costs for those who require that the free school meals provision continues on into college and there's potential for free travel for eligible students as well for those who live more than three miles away from the college so lots of help and support there for you now as part of your studies at carlisle college it is also important to recognize that you will have the opportunity to develop your english and math skills because we know how important they are for your future so for those who haven't achieved their grade four at GCSE in maths or English, there is the opportunity to work towards that grade four and have the opportunity to resit those exams. Course entry requirements now. Um, we, our courses operate at range of levels from level one, level two, level three. And as you can see there, the level which you go on to depends on what grades you get at GCSE. So if you're looking at grades nine to four at GCSE, you'll be looking at level three courses. If you're grades uh, two or one, you'll be looking at level one courses. However, it is important to note that in some areas, you do have to start on lower level courses first in order to gain the necessary vocational skills to move up. So sometimes it's a combination of your GCSE results, your vocational um, knowledge, and in some cases as well, there may be a, a portfolio that has to be produced or a um, you may have to do an audition and that's typically in the arts area so do bear that in mind as well but our job is to make sure that we get you on the right level of course and don't worry about those who won't be sitting exams this year and will be getting uh, calculated grades instead they are very much valid for us and we will take those into consideration so I've mentioned quite a bit about the destinations of our students and on the whole over 90% of our students go into employment or further study which is great and of those actually 200 students apply for university through UCAS each year so actually we're one of the largest institutions in North Cumbria in terms of the number of students that do go on to university and again is something which we can help you with. And as mentioned earlier, we have over 700 apprentices who work with 350 leading local employers. And we're very much geared up to make sure that you have the best possible destination. So we've got some examples now on the next slide, which again shows, for example, Lauren Woff, who studied level three business, who's gone on to the University of York to study business, down to the likes of Alice Ford, who studied level two engineering, who's now gone on to be a rail engineer apprentice with Network Rail. So a whole range there of destinations. 
mentioned apprenticeships a few times there, but just to let you know that Carlo College does offer apprenticeship uh, opportunities, and they are uh, not just in your traditional areas, but also in areas such as accountancy, IT software development. So there are lots of opportunities there, and that is where you will uh, be out in the workplace four days a week, and then you come into Carlisle College to study typically one day a week. So finally then, uh, just to look at uh, what happens then, um, hopefully you'll be interested in making an application to Carlisle College. Applications are still open for September, and you apply online. Um, through the Carlisle College website, find the course that you are interested in and then apply. You would then normally be in, invited to a future student event, but due to the circumstances we are having to do those remotely at the minute, predominantly via phone, uh, where we will contact you following your application. That hopefully will then lead to an offer for a place on a course, which we would be delighted if you would accept, and that will then result you in being invited into enrol and in late August, ready to start in September. So finally then, in terms of uh, keeping in touch with us at Carlisle College, we'd love it if you would like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and that will give you a really good way of finding out what's happening on campus and keeping up to date with all developments at Carlisle College. What I'm now gonna leave you with is a college video, which although, as you can't be there today to see the college for yourself, this video will give you a bit of an insight into the facilities that we do have in Car at Carlisle College. So finally, on, on my behalf, I'd like to thank you uh, for attending this session. I hope that has given you a good overview of Carlisle College and that will kind of set the scene before you then have the opportunity to delve into more detail on the particular subject that you're interested in. Thank you. So I'm just going to move on from that um, to talk about accounting. Uh, so David Mandel uh, joins us uh, as head of the accounts team um, and he's going to run through these next slides with us. My name is David Mandel. I'm one of the accountancy tutors at Carlisle College and I'd like to give you a brief introduction to the courses that we're proposing to run in 2021. Um, starting off with the level two courses. Um, all our courses are through the AAT, which is the Association of Accounting Technicians, and they are by far the largest awarding body of accounting qualifications. So similar to City and Guilds, BTEC, but they just specialise purely in accounting and finance qualifications. Level two is the usual starting point for most people. 
there is um, a level one qualification which is an access course and there is a possibility we may be offering that in September uh, but most people join at level two and we have two courses at level two both are certificates one in bookkeeping one in accounting and they are over a duration between three to nine months uh, aimed at people with little or no experience in accounting. So you don't have to have even worked in accounting to start with one of these two certificate qualifications. Because they are part time courses, students must be aged 19 or over to start the programme, uh, but there may be eligibility for funding, uh, especially if students are unemployed. Moving on to the next level, and this is level three, which is um, a couple of advanced level qualifications. Um, and we have a, a certificate in bookkeeping, which is over a six month duration, and that's aimed at people who've got a little bit of experience in accounting or bookkeeping. Um, this is a shortened version of the full diploma at level three. It's an ideal progression route from pe for people who've done level two, either in bookkeeping or accounting. And because it's level three, students may apply for student loans if they are funding the course themselves. On completion of the advanced bookkeeping certificate, students actually may apply for licensed bookkeeper status with AAT, uh, which gives them the um, ability to be able to do uh, books and accounts work for small businesses. The other level three qualification that we offer is the level three advanced diploma, and that incorporates the bookkeeping qualifications I mentioned previously uh, with other units covering other areas of accountancy and finance. So this would typically be over a 15 month duration. Um, and again, it's suitable for people who have got some experience in accounting. It's ideal for those who want to progress uh, from level two, either with bookkeeping or the level two certificate in accounting. Uh, and again, students who are self funding this uh, would be eligible for student loans with it being a level three advanced qualification. It may be funded through the accounting apprenticeship program for students who are actually working in an accounting role. And I will say a little bit about apprenticeships in accounting before I pass on to the next presenter. After level three, students may progress to the final stage of the AAT qualifications, which is the level four professional diploma. It's unlikely that this would be um, a qualification that someone would come in directly at. Um, so students would normally uh, be required to do level three or equivalent before starting the level four professional diploma. It would be over typically a 15 to 18 month programme, so we would run this over two college years and on completion it gives students a professional accounting status uh, being the uh, the the uh, qualified accounting technician status. So you'd be actually a, a qualified accounting technician at that stage. Uh, you'd be able to gain full membership of the AAT and also have initials after your name uh, if you wanted to go for that. Um, particular status there. Ideal for progression from level three, again for students that want to sort of complete the full um, stage uh, of the AAT programme. Uh, and beyond level four, uh, students can actually use this as a springboard to go towards full chartered status uh, or to go through a, a programme of chartered accountancy qualifications beyond this. Again, it may be funded through the Professional Accounting Apprenticeship Programme for students who are working in an accounting role and students can qualify for uh, student loans if they are self-funding so long as they are over 19. There are optional units available for the professional diploma, so this gives students an opportunity to specialise in areas such as taxation, credit control, cash management or auditing and the requirement is to take two from five available options for the qualification. Moving on um, to say just a little bit about um, apprenticeships. Um, many of our uh, AAT students at level three and level four are actually studying for their qualification as apprentices. Uh, it's a very long established type of training in the UK. Uh, it gives you a very recognised qualification. Um, it's a very um, sort of highly regarded qualification as well. Um, and the apprentice, an apprentice would be um, employed uh, within a company doing an accounting or finance role, um, and they would be paid as an employee of that company. 
and they would be given time off or given time to work towards their apprenticeship, which would have to equate to roughly 20% of their contracted time. So that may be through day release at the college or part day release and part uh, working in the office environment to gain that sort of 20% off the job learning. Uh, the apprentice wage is the sort of national apprentice wage um, of £4.15 per hour, uh, although many employers do actually pay more than that for apprentices. So it is worth looking around. Uh, not everyone will pay the minimum apprenticeship wage uh, for apprentices in accounting. And the, the figures that I've quoted there for the number of apprentices are probably higher than that now. We, we work with many of the local employers in the area. Most of the main accountancy bodies such as Armstrong Watson, Dodd & Co, David Allen work with us uh, to help train their staff. Uh, so we have got a, a lot of good links with businesses in the area to help them recruit and train their apprentices. The programmes that are specific to accountancy, we have the level three assistant accountant apprenticeship that we run. And to coincide with the level four diploma, we have the professional accounting apprenticeship. We also have recently gained approval to offer the level two apprenticeship, which is something that may be coming on board later this year. The duration of an apprenticeship would typically be between 15 and 18 months, uh, usually depends on the experience of the learner and the qualifications on starting. But as I said before, every apprentice must be employed in an accounting or finance role uh, to be eligible for apprenticeship funding. And the apprenticeship itself is based on the apprentice achieving a set of standards, standards in their knowledge, their skills, the behaviours. It's what is expected by an employer if you're taking on or working with a trainee. So the knowledge is largely covered by achieving the AAT qualification and the skills and behaviours are shown by putting that knowledge into practice uh, within the workplace, within that job role. And at the end of your apprenticeship, you would take what they call an end point assessment after a minimum of 12 months and two days. Uh, for most people, this would be around 14, 15 months after they've started their apprenticeship. And this includes partly uh, an examination, uh, one of the AAT assessments. And as well as that, there is also a requirement to put together a portfolio um, to showcase your skills and behaviours that you've demonstrated within the workplace. Just to move on to say a little bit about the assessment methods generally, this is for all AAT students, regardless of level, regardless of whether you are an apprentice or not an apprentice. All of the AAT units are assessed through online assessments from level two right through to level four. And the duration of those would be anything between one hour and three hours. All the assessments are taken at Carlisle College, so that there are no remote assessments uh, available through the awarding body at the moment. Although this may be something that is going to be coming on board uh, within the next 12 months or so. But all the assessments are taken in college, so we, we do have some flexibility regarding assessment dates. Um, at every level, there is what they call a synoptic assessment. And the synoptic assessment is a fairly big, robust um, assessment that covers a huge chunk of each level. So it's at the very end of your qualification. So it's bringing together all of the knowledge, everything you've learned on that particular program. And the synoptic assessment for level three and level four is also a big part of the end point assessment for apprentices. So it forms the, the final part or one of two final parts of your assessment to complete your apprenticeship. And for apprentices only, as I said earlier, there is a work based assessment whereby you are assessed on your skills and behaviours that you've demonstrated in the workplace during your time as an apprentice. And the, the final point just to say is about registration. The AAT are a professional accounting body and all students need to register with the AAT uh, as soon as they have started their programme. So the current registration cost for a new um, student is £150. Uh, that is an annual subscription. It's, it's lower in the second year. Uh, and it is a lower fee for students who are just doing a bookkeeping qualification. 
which may be the level two or level three uh, in bookkeeping. This is covered by the funding for those on apprenticeship programmes or those on any other funded programme. Uh, but if students are self-funding, this is something that you are responsible yourselves for making sure that you are registered because without the registration, we aren't able to actually book you in for assessments or give you access to any of the resources that the AAT hold. Um, at the moment, all of the teaching sessions are delivered remotely uh, during the, the current lockdown that we were in. So we, we deliver all of the training currently through Microsoft Teams on a weekly basis, and all students have access to Microsoft Teams through their Carlisle College uh, enrolment. From September, uh, it is likely that we will be offering a blended approach. So it is likely that there'll still be some delivery through Microsoft Teams, but we are hoping, uh, again, as everyone is at the moment, that restrictions will be lifted to enable us to have maybe more of a mixed year between Teams learning, Teams delivery, and going back to traditional classroom delivery. So it is our hope and intention that we will be able to get back to some kind of classroom delivery uh, by the time September comes round. So thank you all very much for listening and I'll hand you over to the next presenter. And just on to business. OK, okay thank, thank you. you. And, uh, Welcome to the business section. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through um, the information for level two, level three, and also the business degree as well. OK, so uh, both level two and level three business programmes are timed, timetabled over three days a week. Uh, this allows students uh, not only to engage in coursework on the days not in college, but also to have the time for part-time work as well. We feel in the business section that it is beneficial for business students to be in part-time work so that they can experience how the theory of business works in the practical workplace. Our courses are designed to develop personal learning, professional development, interpersonal skills, and of course, business knowledge as well. Our courses will also support preparation for your next steps, whether that be in the workplace or further education. So I'm going to start by taking you through uh, level two. So the entry requirements for level two are four GCSEs at grade three, and this is to include uh, maths and English or level one vocational qualification. Uh, the Level 2 Certificate in Business, um, it focuses on specifically uh, how business uh, operates. It also looks at um, other aspects of business as well, and you will be assessed with two exams, uh, coursework with um, maths and English uh, to reset as well. In terms of progression, um, you can either go on to an apprenticeship um, a level three foundation diploma in business or employment. So for level three, we've got two routes. Uh, the entry requirements are um, five GCSEs at grade nine to four. That's uh, A start to C in old money, uh, including maths and English or level two vocational qualification at merit or distinction. So um, the Level 3 Foundation Diploma uh, is a one year course. Um, it focuses specifically on how businesses operate um, and it's assessed with two exams uh, and coursework. Uh, the exams are in marketing and finance. And from here, the progression is to go on to either an apprenticeship, um, Level 3 Extended Diploma in Business or Employment. Um, and it's the equivalent of one and a half A levels. So if you move on to the extended diploma in business, um, uh, that obviously forms uh, a two year course um, uh, because you've done the foundation uh, as well. Um, it focuses specifically on how, again, how businesses operate um, and is, is assessed by another two exams and coursework. So in total, if you do the two years, you do four exams altogether. Um, and progression from here, uh, is either onto a, um, a higher level apprenticeship, 
um, employment or uh, university. Um, it's equivalent to three year levels um, and more and more universities are accepting um, BTEC uh, level three um, as an entry, uh, an entry requirement uh, for, for their courses. Um, and in fact, more and more of the uh, uh, Russell Group uh, universities accept this qualification now as well. So moving on to the foundation degree in business management. So um, the, this is a programme overview. Um, the actual degree produces uh, work ready graduates um, who understand organisations and the business environment. Um, it develops skills and knowledge required for the work environment. So when you come out of uh, the actual uh, qualification and going to work, uh, and you can progress into employment or uh, onto a top up degree because uh, this is the foundation. So uh, after after completing this qualification, then you can move on to do the top up degree um, or you can go into further training. So uh, the program structure, um, we've got a full time course and we've also got a part time course. The full time course is over two years um, and we also have a um, uh, a one year course as well. So the full time course uh, covers uh, level four and level five uh, in the two years um, and the certificate uh, is full time over one year covers level four. The part time um, again covers level four and level five um, and it's over three years. So the certificate, if you just do the certificate level four, it's over 18 months, um, but the, if you do level four and level five, it's over three years. The full time study is over three days during the week and the part time uh, study is uh, either on a Tuesday afternoon and evening or a Thursday afternoon and evening. So moving on to level four program and the content. Um, so first of all, uh, we introduce um, students uh, into uh, the actual qualification uh, with the unit of academic study skills. Uh, because uh, a number of students uh, come onto the course who have been out of education for a number of years uh, and so we like to go through some of the academic study skills that you, you will need to um, in order to produce the coursework that's required on the course. Um, we look at business management organisations. Uh, this is how business works, um, how businesses make decisions based on the internal and external environment. We look at motivation, teamwork and the role of management. Um, in marketing, we look at how businesses use their marketing strategies and develop awareness within their marketplace. Um, and there's eight different units in total for the level four programme. So moving on to level five. So the level five program, uh, we also ask students to carry out a project, uh, not, not just in the level on the level five, but also in level uh, four as well. Um, and these projects, they look at how um, you can actually improve your organization by doing a project on a certain uh, aspect of the, of the business organization. So you may have a look at induction for your organization and do a project on that. Uh, so we ha we have a project in in level four and in level five, and it, it's it, they're really really useful um, uh, units to to go through because it gives you some sort of uh, basis for when you actually go into to the workplace. Um, we help students to become more familiar with financial management, as well as human resource management and working in effective teams. Um, and the degree is a very um, good platform for students move on to management roles in business. So uh, that is the uh, business qualifications and we're now going to move on to support. Um, thanks Martin. Hello everyone, my name is Simon Jameson and I'm one of the, um, the tutors in the sports department. Um, so I'm just going to take you through the, the level of courses that we've got. We, we have a range of courses that go from level two to level three and it's just to give you a little bit of an idea of, of who they might be available to and, and where they can lead. 
So, so the first one we've got is um, is called a level two work skills in sport and public service. So, so the course itself is mainly around um, a work skills qualification. But what we do is we bring in a sport and a public service element. So, so we work closely with the, the public service department, and this really is a foundation course, um, and it's a starting point for those who maybe haven't done as well in the, the GCSEs. So, um, people who are coming onto this course would be still needing to to revisit. GCSE in maths and English. So if you haven't got your four yet in, in maths and English, then you would be looking to do um, to do this course. It's a mixture really of um, vocational units and units that are really going to help you with, with gain and employment. So if you can have a look at some of those on there. So we've got developing your CV, which is really starting to get you to think about work um, and where you're at. So you're starting to look at um, your current qualifications and skills and where you need to try and improve. Um, We've also got units that are maybe more generic, um, like working in a team. So, so where you gain your strengths from leadership, um, helping each other out as a team, identifying strengths and weaknesses of people's skills. Um, when we're looking at the more sport units, then it, it would be something um, like sports leadership or assistant leadership. So this would involve looking at the skills and qualities you would need for those um, to be a sports leader. And then you would actually start and do some practical elements where you would actually lead a session um, and it, it's really giving you that practice that you would need to go out and work in the industry. Um, also healthy lifestyles which would start and have a look at um, the fitness side of things, so diet, um, how you can actually start and improve your lifestyle and how you could maybe start and educate and teach others as well in how they can start and improve theirs. From the public service side of things we'd maybe have a look at democratic society, uh, sorry, um, yeah, democratic societies, how you basically what's actually happening in, in society, how you can build law, um, how people really start to have a look at um, the, your rights and things within society. And if you are going to be working in the public services, how you can maybe start and enforce rules and things as well and your role within that society. Um, also, there's a unit on citizenship, um, which would, would start and have a look at um, diversity. Um, and when we're looking at diversity, it's more about the different groups and start to look at discrimination. And, and again, if you're going to be working with the public services, how would you go about trying to remove that, that discrimination and help create a diverse society? Um, as you can see, there's quite a few. It's a one year course. Um, and again, it really there's an emphasis on, on stud, work, studying and working towards your maths and English. Um, and there's, there's really the, it's all assignments and it's all coursework. So, um, there's no exams or anything involved in that, so there's no pressure with actually having exams for this vocational course. What we will do though is there'll be a mixture of assignments that are written and reports, but also it could be more practical. So we'll actually watch um, and assess you while you, you lead in a session, or it could be taking a presentation. And again, that's where it links back into the work skills. Um, and it, really, it's, it's, it's an ideal um, foundation course. And if you are looking to progress, then that will give you a chance then to, to go on to one of our technical diplomas. Um, what we've got in our department is the level two tech di diploma in sport um, and activity leadership. But we also have a, a tech diploma in public services um, that one of the, the team members will actually speak about further on in the presentation. Um, so if we're going to have a look at the, the tech diploma in sport um, and activity leaders, again, it's a one year course. But we would accept, expect people to have either one maths or one English if they're looking to come in, um, and study on this one. And the reason for that is because we do have um, two exams on this course. And what we find is it's probably a bit too much pressure if you if you stood in towards maths and English and doing the two exams that you'd need to do to pass the vocational course. Um, when we're saying about the exams, you do actually need to get through those exams to 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 gain the qualification. You will get two attempts, um, which is the same with a, with a lot of assignments and things in BTEC as well. Um, but there is a bit of pressure there to try and get through this. Um, so just have a look at the assessment methods. We can see that the first um, two units are the exam units. So we've got the first one, which is leading sport. Um, and that really is starting to look at the different target groups that so could be um, the elderly, it could be women, it could be unemployed. And what you start to do is think about um, how you can actually get people involved in sport and different activities and things you might be able to put on um, and, and really start and build um, participation levels within the sports industry. The second exam is um, 
it's slightly different in the fact that it's multiple choice, but it's working in sport and activity leadership. And that's more about the health and safety and day-to-day and -day aspects of actually working within the sports industry. So looking at your roles and responsibilities and, and how you actually keep people safe. Um, when we go on to look at the rest of the units, these are all assessed um, by assignments. And again, there will be a practical element to each of these units. If we're looking at this course, it is a lot more practical based um, than any of the other courses that we've got. Um, and it's it's really there to give you that experience then of, of maybe being out, go, able to go out and be a coach or, um, or a sports leader. So, so the units we've got are a lead in sport and physical activity. And really what that is, it's a practical, um, it's building on the exam that we'll, you'll have, you've studied early on in the year and you'll actually take some of those those skills and things that you've learned and put them into practice. Um, there's a coaching unit, so coaching sport, and that goes into a bit more technical um, elements of, of being a coach and assessing people's performance. Then we've got developing skills for sport and activity leadership. Um, so that's more about the, the actual personal skills that you have and how you can start and develop. Um, and, and what we end up with is an event that would allow you to lead different groups as well. So um, you'd come together with the rest of your group and put some kind of a sports event on. So in the past, we've, we've had things like um, football tournaments or netball tournaments, dodgeball, that kind of thing. Um, once you've completed the level two tech diploma, um, the tech certificate, sorry, in, in sport, then you ha then have the option then of moving on to the level three. Now it's down to being able to achieve the maths and English as well in terms of grades form. So we do need to be progressing on those as we're going through. Um, but if you are in a position to do to do the level three sport, if you're coming in with, with the maths and English grades and the, the three extras in terms of um, GCSEs at fours or the previous level two qualification. Um, we've got two years of study, so we can actually split this up into to two courses. We've got one that's the um, foundation diploma and then we have an extended diploma. Um, people who maybe do one year tend to just um, are looking at maybe topping up from A levels um, so they get enough UCAS points to go off to university or they might be considering doing an apprenticeship after one year just so they're going to gain a few skills within that, in that sports industry, um, maybe gain a few more qualifications and then go off and do apprenticeship. Um, those who are looking at doing a two year course are probably looking at um, a higher apprenticeship or going on to university. Um, and like the, the business and a lot of BTECs, the majority of, of universities will take the, the BTEC course um, and um, there will quite often be conditional offers attached maybe to get distinction, distinction merit um, or distinction, distinction, distinction. Um, but the grades and things we can start going into a bit of detail when we, we, we do interviews. Um, just to go through the first year of study then, there is two exams in each year and that's um, and again, like the, the level two BTEC um, tech certificate, you do need to get through these exams to pass the course. So um, there's two exams in the first year and two exams in the second year, and they do actually grade um, as double. So they count double towards the actual grade that you'll go towards in the end. So the first exam is anatomy and physiology, um, which is a straightforward exam where you'll be given um, You'll actually be tested on your knowledge on, on the, the anatomy and physiology and how the body works and um, impacts on sport. And then you've got a second one, which is a controlled assessment exam, which is really all about sports development. So it's fitness training, programming, health, sport and wellbeing. So you, um, you'll actually be able to take notes into the exam um, and then you'll be given the rest of the scenario and you'll carry on from there. So, um, so they, they do need to be passed and they're the two, two main units for the exams. Then other units will start and have a look at um, the way that the, the BTEC works at level three. The majority of the unit will be theory based as it is a, an A level standard. And then, but every unit will have some kind of practical element at the end. So with sports leadership, you'll have a look through this, the skills and the qualities that you need to be a good sports leader. Then you will get assessed on the, the practical side of it and actually lead in. For fitness testing, you'll have a look at health screening, um, all the theory behind the different fitness tests and then you will actually test people and try and find out their results compared to national norms and how they can improve. Um, and then the, the final one um, will be a sports event where you can actually get together as a group again and then put the majority of all the units that you've used in the year together. Um, and then if we look at the second year, um, 
Again, you'll have two exams in this year. So if you have a look at those, the first one, um, both of these exams will be controlled assessments. So similar to, to the fitness and health and wellbeing in the first year, you will be able to take notes in. Um, so the pressure's off a little bit, but it, it's still exams that you need to try and get through. Um, so th the first one is development and provision for sports and physical activity, and that's almost like you're a sports development officer. So those who are interested in, in sports development side of sport, um, it really is the role of a, a sports development officer and start to take through and try to develop a sport. And then the second one for those who are looking to go down the business route is investigating business in sport. And that will have a look at um, setting up a business from scratch, looking at marketing, competition, um, all the different um, SWOT analysis and things and how you can actually start and make a successful business within sport. And then again, that leads us to the last few units, which will all be assessed by um, assignment. Um, again, these could, in, can, could in, can include practical um, elements and you might be actually assessed as you're actually taking part in the session. But um, we've got practical sports performance, which looks at individual and team sports. Um, one thing to point out on that really is that it's not the same as GCSE P or A-level a PE. In this one, it's more about how you um, evaluate your performance. It's not necessarily the level of sport performance that you provide. Coaching for performance is a bit of a step up from the level two where you'll actually um, need to make sure that you are coaching properly and that um, there's progression and it's over um, four sessions. So you'll actually take people from one starting point and take them to, to the end over four sessions and introducing different coaching points and try to improve performance. Um, we've got research methods in sport, which really is preparing people for university. So, so this is um, a mini um, project really that people are starting to have a look at um, and what they'll start and do is just um, take you through how you actually do all your research and how you validate research and then put it all together in a report. Um, and then the final few slides really from us is just all about enrichment and um, destinations where we're trying to get to. So in terms of Richmond, um, I said we work closely with the public service so um, it could be involved some different activities and things with the army. We've got there on the top right, um, that's actually a wheelchair basketball session. So, so the Carlisle Wheelchair Club actually came in with the wheelchairs um, and then it, you get to have a go in those and get some coaching and things on that. Um, we've got things like climbing walls and, and different activities and going out. And then we've got um, on the bottom right there, you can see there's, there's football tournaments and things that will be held and other sports tournaments that you can start and take part in. And then if we look at destinations, Oh, sorry, that's just a picture from um, visits over to Newcastle. So it's Newcastle Falcons with the rugby. And then we actually had went to the Newcastle Chelsea match and had a training session with um, Newcastle coaches as well over at their, their training centre. And um, last things, other things quickly, we will do additional qualifications like first aid um, and heart start and things. So it's really qualifications that will help you with employment in the future. Um, and then finally, destinations, just to let you know where, where some of our people go. And, and really, it's um, if we're looking at universities, the popular ones are the ones um, in the north. So we've got Northumbria, um, University of Chester, um, and the types of courses that we've got there. So we've got analysis of coaching, sports coaching, um, strength and conditioning. And we do get a lot of people going off to do things like journalism, um, physiotherapy, um, and really the key thing is that there's a wide range of units that you'll study and a wide range of destinations that you can then lead to. Um, but thanks for listening. I'll pass you on to the next presenter. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name's Jeff Hagan. I'm uh, one of the three public service tutors at Carlisle College uh, and uh, today I'm just going to talk you through the uh, levels of course we run for public services and those interested in public services. Um, so the two two courses that we do run, uh, we run two levels, uh, both of which are BTEC, working to the 2020 specifications. Uh, level two, which is the certificate in preparation for public services, and level three, which is the extended diploma for public services. Uh, both are delivered over three days per week. Uh, so it's like a, a compressed week of full time courses, but the, the input is delivered over three weeks, three days of the week. Um, so a quick look at level two, um, we'll, we'll move on 
to level two. The, the next slide. Um, this is an introductory course uh, for 16 to 19 year olds. It looks at a broad range of um, public services and the knowledge and skills to enter the sector or go on to um, further education uh, or the level three qualification. Assessment is built into the course through assignments and practical assessments. There are no written external assessments in the uh, 2020 specification, but there are a mix of mandatory units and optional units, so you do have to do specific units. Uh, next slide. A quick look at level three now. Uh, this uh, looks to progress students towards employment in the sector or to further education, higher educational qualifications. Uh, the qualification itself is uh, uh, equivalent of about three A levels, uh, so it develops those higher level skills that you need to go on to university. Uh, the two year option for the course um, uh, brings you between 48 to 168 UCAS points, depending on your attainment. As you can see, uh, that goes from pass through to distinction star level. Again, mandatory and specialist units uh, and students build a portfolio of evidence of assignments, reports, presentations, reflective logs and other evidence. And this is all externally and internally quality assured. So entry requirements, course entry requirements, the level two uh, requires four GCSEs at uh, grade three, including maths and English or a level one vocational qualification at a merit or a distinction. Uh, the level three requires uh, five GCSEs at grades nine to four, including maths and English, or a level two vocational qualification at merit or distinction level. Um, so maths and English, next slide. Uh, additional maths and English, students who don't have level four maths and English will work towards achieving level four alongside the course. So level two subject areas, course structure. So this slide just shows you the, the structure of the, the level two course, the 2020 specification that we're looking at. As you can see, it includes a wide range of public sector work related to topics covering five units, uh, including the two mandatory units, which you can see at the top, public service skills and support for the community and employment in uniformed services, uh, which shows you the range of uh, public service occupations uh, and gives students uh, an option uh, to decide which one might they might be best suited for. And then out of the optional units, there's uh, three selected. Um, so currently we're covering activities and teamwork for the public services. Uh, we're looking at attending emergency incidents in the, the public services. And then uh, another one from the crime aspects of law, community cultural awareness, uh, there's, uh, there's a, a good wide variety of options there. So um, what I've done with this particular course, because I, I teach on this course, is I've picked four and I've let the students uh, pick their last unit. Uh, level three specification. Uh, subject areas, course structure again, very, very comprehensive. Um, uh, this is the, the latest specification. Obviously on the sheet, the M indicates the mandatory unit. Um, most of the students go for the two year option, which is the extended diploma, which is uh, 1080 guided learning units. And uh, you cover most of the the, um, the units, which are from one to 17 down there. Um, some of the students, uh, if they're opting for a one year course, can do uh, the diploma foundation, diploma extended certificate, depending on um, their academic qualifications when they come in. Uh, to the course, but it, it, it is flexible and we do have students over a range uh, of those um, qualifications along the top. Um, enrichment activities, yeah, a number of enrichment activities. Um, obviously, we're, we're a bit hamstrung at the moment in terms of uh, lockdown and getting people in, but we have had, uh, I've had the fire service in to talk to us. We've had the, uh, the army in talking to us. Uh, they were supposed to be coming this this month to do an elite skills session with the students, uh, but that has, has to be postponed until we're out of this current situation that we're in. But activities can include guest speakers from civilian services, police, fire, uh, ambulance, NHS, um, military, army, RAF, Navy, 
visits to locations, police stations, fire stations, uh, military bases, uh, control rooms, law courts, etc. have all been uh, carried out on previous courses. This gives students the opportunity to meet and ask questions from those in the industry to give them a, a wider understanding of the industry and get, get the information firsthand for those people working in the industry. And finally, destinations. Uh, this include all of the civilian and military services, recruitment programs, police, fire, rescue, uh, ambulance, NHS, Coast Guard, prison service, border force, Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, and also the level three uh, students can go on to higher education uh, university courses. Uh, we've currently got a number who've already got offers uh, for places uh, for, for the, our second years going on this year. Um, and courses can range from uh, investigative practices to criminology, police constable degree apprenticeships, emergency disaster management, uh, uh, and the, the locations across the country that offers for Sheffield, Leeds, UCL, Northumbria, Liverpool. Uh, so there's a wide range of options. Uh, and that's it from public services. So what I'll do is I'll hand you over now to Ed, who's going to go through computing and IT. Thank you. Right, good afternoon. So my name's John and I'm going to talk with my colleague Ed uh, very shortly uh, about the computing courses we offer at Carlo College. So I'm one or we are one of about six tutors that are currently at the college and I'm going to describe about the level two and level three courses that we offer in the entry requirements that you need. So level two BTEC information and creative technology that requires you to have at least a level one qualification plus maths and English at three or above or four GCSE qualifications, including maths and English at grade three and above. So the level two course is one of our sort of like pathway courses that gives you a flavour of what it's like to be on a computing course. Um, and I'll explain in a moment when we get to the next slide about some of the modules that are involved in it. But level two is a year's course. It does involve some exams that we'll talk about, and it also involves some practical and theoretical assignments. Level three, there are two level three courses, both of which can be taken over two years. And they are uh, computer science and information technology, um, both of which have slightly different modules, but you end up with the same um, standard of qualification at the end of the day, which is worth three A-levels. So the level two qualification is uh, including maths and English at grade um, three. The level three qualification is five GCSEs, including maths and English at grade four or the equivalent C and above. So if we could just go on to the next slide. This shows one of our practical labs. So it's a brief picture there of a practical lab. So we do have some practical labs that allow you to take computers apart and put them back together again and that forms part of one of our modules which is their technology systems but also um, in computer and IT it also involves um, one of the modules computer systems that you can take a computer apart and put it back together and learn the different components within it that's one of the practical assessments and um, this shows some of the level two modules which we currently offer so for example um, things that you'd use in a daily uh, workplace, for example, um, web design, which uh, is very useful for businesses. Spreadsheets and databases, again, used quite a lot in businesses at the moment in time for keeping track on like finances and funding and things like that. Networks, um, there's a big sort of demand at the moment for people that know how to create and maintain networks. So we start you off on some of the basic skills about how to, to use those. Um, digital portfolio. Well, that's useful for collecting together a range of work that you've done throughout the year and to be able to show future employers about some of the samples of work and experience that you've gathered on the course. So if you were to pass this course at least a merit grade, so we've got past merit and distinction, um, that would allow you a pathway through to level three. So you can also progress through the course levels if you if you need to. But you can also direct entry at level three if you've got the grades like explained on the previous slide. So these are some of the level three courses on computer science so modules in computer science. And um, so we have things like website development, 
Um, so we will we show you how to use HTML code and how to program a website to the latest standards that industry are looking for. Um, we've got projects as well, which is regarding um, maintaining and managing a project throughout um, and also learning some of the skills involved in project methodologies and how projects work. We've got principles of computer science, so that's one of our controlled assessments. So that's an exam that you'd take. Um, hopefully when we're back to college, normally that would take place in college. Um, and again, it's a mixture of different elements of computing, um, which you learn throughout uh, sort of like practical sessions and theory based sessions. And we give you plenty of practice before the actual exam as well. Uh, we've got security, so security is a big business now in computing and learning how to uh, make devices secure through various methods of encryption um, and we teach you how to make sure that your computer is set up correctly so that various sort of like bad people can't access the information on them. Um, social media again big business at the moment especially with people working from home and things like that so a lot of businesses are setting up um, sort of like new platforms on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram um, so we teach you how to maintain those platforms and how to make best use of them and uh, that could be a pathway onto say a digital marketing um, course that you might take in the future. Uh, software de designer development, so obviously like building software um, using uh, programming to develop uh, software for businesses and for individuals and networks as well. Um, so networking computers together and maintaining a network from a server. So this is a slight change on the information technology course. Um, again, some of the modules are, are the same, some are slightly different. Um, but just to give you an example there, um, we, we do some more sort of IT based modules, I suppose, on the IT um, side rather than the computer science. So we've got there, we've got web design um, and web development. Um, we've got databases as well. Um, again, databases is a controlled assessment that we will do. Um, you can take it at uh, either year one or year two, um, which is a, a controlled assessment in college. Moving on. So the assessment methods, they take different forms. So obviously we want you to achieve the best grade you can. And through a BTEC course, you'll do a range of different assessments. Uh, we assume zero knowledge when you do enter the course. So all of our tutors aim to show you the skills and experience that you need to enable you to pass either a pass, a merit and distinction. Obviously, we want you to try and get as high grade as you possibly can because that will give you more options in the future. So we might do a practical assessment. We might give you something to put together like a computer in a lab and, and sort of assess your ability to do that. It might be solving a problem, so we might set up a situation where you've, you've got something you've got to obviously fix and solve and assess you based off that. As explained, we've got exams, so exams are externally marked um, through BTEC and uh, exams are certain exams that happen throughout the year at certain times and there's certain exams as well on like level two, we can book you in at certain times and, and enter you in for those to, to sort of give you the best chance at passing them in one in one chance uh, in one in one try um, we've also got things like portfolios uh, that you put together and enter as a, an assessment um, and we've also got assignments we give as well so um, we might uh, sort of show you how to do something give you an assignment give you a set time to do that assignment hand it in and um, we'll mark it and then you can either get a pass merit or distinction but don't worry if you don't obviously pass something first time round because you can have another go through some referral work and at that point i'd like to pass over to my colleague ed who's going to talk about our foundation degree program thanks john uh, so my name is ed fitton and i'm the lead for the foundation degree at Carlisle college uh, the foundation degree, it's a two year full time or three year part time higher education qualification uh, qualification. It is equivalent to the first two years of a degree or an HND. Uh, the qualifications quite a new qualification. We only got it validated last April and we've, we've run it for the first time in September 2020. So we're currently on our first year. 
Uh, it was developed with input from local employers, the British Computer Society uh, and students to ensure that it provides an up to date computer science qualification that will meet the needs of learners and employers now and in the future. And the next slide, please. Thank you. So the course is made up um, of a number of modules. Uh, the first year modules include academic skills, which develops the learner skills um, around research, uh, professional report writing and academic um, referencing. Computational maths, where learners build on math skills developed in the past, but specifically around maths used in computing, such as programming and networking. Core concepts of programming, which introduces and develops core programming design and development skills in a C-based language. Information systems and databases, where learners will be looking at different information systems development and uh, developing uh, SQL databases. Fundamentals of networking, which introduces learners to network technologies around today's data communication systems. Uh, dynamic web development, where learners gain the core skills to develop um, dynamic websites. And finally, computer security, which looks at the fundamental of cyber security breaches and, and protection systems. Year two modules continue on from there and we build on the fundamentals from the first year. Plus, we've got a number of extra units in there. We're merging new technologies and mobile application development. Next slide, please. OK, so on this course, there are a number of different assessment methods we use. Um, there are one or two exams, although not many. The majority of it will be through either uh, portfolio, um, report writing, uh, presentations and our practical assessments, which we do in our labs. From the foundation degree, once you've completed your two years, you have a choice. You can either go on and look for um, employment or you can uh, go on and do a top up to get a full degree. Now at the college, we offer a BCS uh, um, Bachelor of Science Computing top up. It's a one year full time or a two year part time course. The course uh, has a number of units in it, so it has database driven websites where we're building web based applications for businesses and organisations. Uh, E-business, exploring how businesses use technology and IT systems to earn revenue and carry out effective business practices. System concepts, developing an ability to approach complex problem situations and identify and manage challenging human interactions. Object-oriented methods in computing, reviewing and developing an object-oriented approach to programming in the real world, and this will be based around C++ and Java language, and then a double project unit where you will take control and produce a product or carry out research surrounding a topic of your choice in the computing sector. And this is a level six qualification. Previous examples of projects, including creating a distributed video transcoder, using geotagging and GPS device to create a security device, exploration of alternative input methods for immersive control and adjusting to a cashless world. And as you can see, there's some quite complex projects have been done in the past. And that's it for the higher education. So I can hand over to the media now. So I'm Darren Horn. I am one of the uh, tutors on the Creative Media Production and Technology course. And it is a media course, but I really want to make clear that it is a filmmaking course, really. But there's so many things around filmmaking. Filmmaking is merely the spine that runs through it all. It is a UAL course, which is phenomenal because it's made by artists for artists. And what I really like about it is we, all the media tutors had to send off their CV to get permission to show we were as skilled as we are to teach on this. What I love about it is its structure. There's eight different modules in the first year. So the first seven are just pass fail. That is good because that encourages you to fail. What we don't want you to come, doing is coming out of school and then worrying about what grade you're going to get. Like, oh, can I do this to get a merit? Can I do that to get a distinction? If you do that, you will not take any risks. And it may sound harsh, but I really want you to fail. I want you to fail in creating art. You cannot do art. You cannot be an entrepreneur. You cannot be a scientist. You cannot be a sports person if you don't fail. The fear of failure is one of the biggest things that's going to stop you from succeeding in your life. So you only get grade, graded on the very final one. And that is a system that is just repeated throughout the year. You come up with an idea, you research it, you make it. Um, and then you evaluate it and you do that several times. What you make can be a little bit up to you, but we tend to guide you with horror movies, scenery creations, adverts, music videos, radio dramas, 
And that is the core structure. What we do around that depends on what's going on in the world. Right now, if we would be talking about Black Lives Matter, we'd be watching a lot more black cinema. We would be talking about the pandemic. Last year, we talked a little bit more about class because of what was happening with the Oscars and, and the Me Too movement. It varies. New technology comes along all the time. So we change it depending on what's going on. It's no surprise that two of the tutors have master's degrees in media futures because we're looking at the future. And what's good about that is this quote here about storytelling. Filmmakers are storytellers. We learn a narrative structure. We, we want to persuade people. In the next 10 years or so, 40 to 50 percent of the jobs that are out there are going to disappear. They're going to be replaced by technology. They're going to be replaced by the matrix. They're going to be replaced by artificial intelligence, robotics, um, AI, uh, yeah, AI robotics and automation. So the thing that is of most valuable to you is the thing that makes you human. And that's all the things Paul was talking about. It's storytelling, persuasion, empathy. Uh, as a artist, your role is to reach inside your chest, pull out your heart and be like, I feel this, do you? And so a lot of all the courses that you've heard from this afternoon are about who are you going to be in the world? Who, what is important to you? What change do you want to make? What dent do you want to put into the universe? And that's an ongoing thing. It is. I, someone earlier said that the course was transformative. Art should be transformative. And if you're 16, 17, 18, it doesn't matter, 22 right now, you're going to have a career in 2040. That's 20 years time and you'll still be younger than I am now. And I've still got 30 years of work to do. So what does the world look like? And the world is going to change dramatically. 20 years ago, I was playing, I think, a PlayStation 1. I, it, we didn't have social media. We didn't have um, um, YouTube. So we've got to double down on the things that make you most human. And that's the biggest part of that is going to be uh, the, the ability to rapidly learn and think for yourself and learn independently. And we embrace that. I obviously love this quote by Steve Jobs, but I also love a quote from this film, Doctor Strange. The ancient one says to Doctor Strange, you're a man looking at the universe through a keyhole. I cannot stress to you enough how important that is as an artist to realize that you, we have blinkers on. We're, we're looking at such a tiny an element of existence. And if you're paying attention to what's happening right now with Black Lives Matter, you're probably realizing that some of the history you've learned is actually false or definitely skewed. So what is the world like if you really start to open, take off those bliss, uh, blinkers and really look at the world? And there's so many opportunities as Paul was taking. It's Paul was saying, it's not just, can you get a job in Cumbria? Can you get a job in London? If you're an artist, you can potentially go to the Philippines and probably live in a five star hotel if you can make 10, 20, 30 pound a day uh, online remotely. There's amazing things you can do if you can be courageous. So my big message to you would be that if you're going to come on any of these arts course, courses and media is a filmmaking course for artists, it would be to step out of your comfort zone, realize we're going to shine a light deep inside your heart and work out who you are and ask you to share that with the world and make a dent in the universe, as Steve Jobs says. Thank you. If you do have any questions, other questions following this, um, you can message us on Facebook, um, Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, any social media, um, or visit us on our website. Um, there's lots of content and information there too. Um, there's no other questions uh, came through. Um, but just to let everybody know from an apprenticeship perspective, because I know we've only just touched on apprenticeships, um, all application windows for apprenticeships will be opening during uh, National Apprenticeship Week, which is week commencing in February. Um, now, by application window and um, by applying directly to us, that puts you into our talent pool. Um, now, that means that any relevant relevant opportunity or vacancy that comes live, um, we'd be able to put forward for, um, but it doesn't guarantee you um, a an apprenticeship. Um, so what we would recommend uh, you doing if you are looking for an apprenticeship at the start in September is to contact as many employers as you possibly can right now uh, just to try and see if there's an opportunity there um, to obviously undertake an apprenticeship um, employed by them and, and through uh, Carlisle College um, and then we can sort of take it from from there for you. Um, so that would be my recommendation. 
Um, again, I haven't had any other questions, um, so uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon and this evening. Um, I hope uh, you have uh, a lovely evening and rest of the week. Um, and again, um, in terms of applying to Carlisle College, uh, all application windows for full time courses are open now. Um, so just visit our website and make an application uh, and we hope to see you in September. Thank you very much.